Hello YouTube and welcome to another video brought to you by KC0 LKV. In this particular video I'm going to show you how to build your personal retro arcade machine using only the, the component right here, a Raspberry Pi 3, micro USB, then you're going to be needing, well optionally if you want to work on command line and things like that, for setup, it's handy to have a portable keyboard. It can also be a, a USB keyboard. And then, of course, a retro style gamepad. You want uh, the one with a USB to connect to your retro pie. You can find something like this at Micro Center or on Amazon for around 10, 15 bucks. Uh, in some cases, you can also use your controller for your Xbox, but you have to make some modification to the RetroPie configuration. Anyway, so let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to load a RetroPie image to our micro SD card. I forgot to mention this. Uh, uh, when you work with uh, Raspberry Pi or with an SD card in general, uh, I strongly recommend for you to download and install these four software. The first one is SD Formatter, works really well on Windows and allows you to format your SD card. I recommend you to do that if you previously use uh, the micro SD for any other project. Win32 Disk Imager. Uh, this one will allow you to copy the image of RetroPie or any other uh, pie variant, uh, variation to your SD card. FileZilla Client allows you to connect to your Raspberry Pi remotely and to transfer file into your Raspberry Pi. We're going to use this when we have to move some games from the local computer to the Raspberry Pi. And then PuTTY. Uh, PuTTY basically uh, allows you to connect remotely RDC into your uh, Raspberry Pi in case you want to work with some command line if you are away from uh, uh, the Pi itself. Okay, the first thing in the process is downloading the RetroPie image. To do so, we're going to go to retropie.org.uk forward slash download. I'm going to have all of the links, uh, everything that we use today into the description. Then, based on the type of Raspberry Pi that you have, you're going to need to download the version for Pi 1 or the version for Pi 2 or 3. In my case, since I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3, I'm downloading this version. It is about 580 meg in size, so it will take a few minutes for the full version to download. I already have downloaded the Raspberry Pi uh, image, uh, the RetroPie image, so I'm going to show you now the process in installing it to your SD card. The first thing we're going to do right now is we're going to insert our uh, micro SD into the SD adapter. We're going to insert it into my computer. The image up here, as you can see, it's a blank uh, SD card. What we want to do right now is we want to format the SD card. So we're going to use SD formatter. Over here, as you can see, it's a 14 gig, 16 gig SD card. We can give it a label. We can call it this one RetroPie if we want to. Then we want to click on Option. We want to make sure that the format size adjustment is clicked to On. We're going to click OK and we're going to click Format. Click OK to the two warning. and the image is formatted. Now, if you really have some time, uh, I recommend you to maybe use a, a different type of formatting, which is not a quick one, but maybe even the full erase, uh, which allows you, uh, it will completely erase the CD card. For our purpose right now, the quick format will work just fine. Once the image is formatted, once the SD card is formatted, we're gonna exit. Next into the process, we have to copy the uh, image of, from uh, the uh, from where we downloaded to our SD card. I have the image copied to a local folder on my desktop called Raspberry Pi. 
that makes it easier for me to find it when I need to use it. I use that folder for anything that is Raspberry Pi related. I'm using a software called 7-Zip to extract the zip file that I downloaded into the actual image file. Once the image is completely extracted from the zip file, I'm going to use Win32 Disk Imager to copy their image into my SD card. Okay, so here's the option. H is the letter where my SD card is inserted. I'm going to select the folder where the image file is. In my particular case, the image is on my desktop in a folder called Raspberry Pi. And from here is the RetroPie version 4.1. And here's the image. I'll click Open. And I click Right. I want to say yes to the warning. Basically, this is going to reformat the SD card and write the image to the SD card. And I'm going to click Yes. The process might take a few minutes. And I will get back to you once the image is completely copied to the SD card. Once the image is successfully copied to your SD card, you're going to receive a message on your screen that says the image, uh, the, the ride was complete successful. You're going to click OK. And you're going to click Exit. Now, before you eject your SD card, you want to make sure that you eject this SD card from the computer. Don't just pull the SD card outside. So eject boot H. This will make it safe, safe for your SD card to be removed. Okay, I have inserted the SD card into the adapter on my Raspberry Pi. And now we're going to move the Raspberry Pi to my, in the other room where I have a big screen where we're going to connect the Pi and where we're going to do the final setup of the RetroPie arcade. Okay, so I have connected my RetroPie, my Raspberry Pi to my TV. And uh, this is not a perfect setup, uh, but that's what I have to work with right now. So once it's connected to the TV, the Raspberry Pi is going to boot in RetroPie and we're going to complete the final configuration for the system, load up a couple game, and I'm going to show you how the RetroPie works. When the RetroPie is completely booted, if you have your gamepad connect to it, it will warn you that the gamepad has been detected. So now what we're going to do is we're going to configure our gamepad and uh, with, uh, it's, you know, with buttons and how we want it for the gamepad to work. So we have a generic gamepad, as I showed you before. And what is asking us right now is to press any key on the gamepad to make it work. So I'm going to press a key. And now I have the option. So for up, down, left, right, and start. So very straightforward. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna press up. And you can see it moves to the next one. Then I'm gonna press down, left, right. I'm gonna select my start my select now it's asking me for my straight key a b x and y and of course i'm going to do a b x and y next i have my left shoulder and my right shoulder so i'm going to click my left I'm going to click my right. Now, the rest of the configuration, we're just going to click one of the buttons that we already use on the gamepad because my gamepad does not have everything. Now, you might have some gamepad that have everything else, like the one for the Xbox, so you're welcome to continue. In our case, we're just going to click the keys already been taken. And so what I'm going to do is... 
press the button till I'm complete down the configuration. And now we're going to click the A button. And we are into the RetroPie setup. As you notice, it says 13 Gable. That's not quite true. It's just the setup. There is nothing else. So you're wondering what are all the game. Well, uh, when the RetroPie is first installed, there are no game installed on the console. You will have to download the ROMs for the games that you want to use. And you're going to copy the ROMs into a ROM subdirectory. I'm going to show you that in just one second. Now, important disclaimer. I'm not going to show you where you can download ROMs for your RetroPie, uh, something that you can Google online. Uh, you can uh, legally, I'm going to stress this out, legally, you can only download ROMs of which you own a game. You cannot download ROMs of games that you don't own. So keep that in mind. But then you're going to move the ROMs into the respective folder on your RetroPie. And I'm going to show you in the next part of this video how to do that. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to enter the RetroPie. And you're presented over here with a bunch of options. The one that I'm interested in is going to be the show me the IP address. And I'm going to click on it in just one second. Okay. I'm going to use my joystick up and down to sell, go to show my IP. I'm going to click A on my joystick to select the show my IP. And I click the wrong one. So I'm going to click A. I'm going to click A again. It will go into actually run the command, uh, the Linux command to show an, an IP address. And my local IP address is the bottom one. Okay, I'm back at my workstation and right now I'm using the software called FileZilla. And uh, in this particular software I'm going to use to transfer ROMs that I have downloaded uh, online. And I'm going to transfer them to my uh, RetroPie. I downloaded a Galaga Europe version NES ROM and I'm going to connect to my RetroPie and move it into the ROMs directory. Now, even if you don't know your IP address for your RetroPie, the RetroPie uh, actual name is RetroPie. So if you type in in FileZilla for host RetroPie, username Pi, the password is the standard password for Raspberry Pi, which is Raspberry, and the port is 22. You're going to click Quick Connect. And now you notice I'm connected remotely to my RetroPie. The RetroPie ROMs folder is underneath RetroPie and ROMs. These are all the available ROMs. Now, the particular ROM that we downloaded is NES. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to click on the NES. And I'm going to move that ROM into that folder. That's it. The ROM, the game, and now is copied to my RetroPie, and we are ready to go play it. Okay, back into the other room. This time we want to we want to restart the emulator. So we're going to click Quit, and we're going to restart the emulation station. This doesn't actually restart the Pi. It just starts restart the. Uh, RetroPie image. And as you can see, once I restart the Pi, I have now the Nintendo logo appear on my screen. This is why this is because anytime install I'm installing a new ROM into a different folder in the ROMs folder, that particular emulator becomes available. If we click A, my game Galaga is available. I'm gonna click game A again. And voila, I am ready to play 
Thank you for watching and look for another video brought to you by KC0LKV.